Have you ever witnessed something so insane and amazing that you wished you had a camera filming? Well, we've gathered together some moments caught on camera that are so amazing that would be impossible to believe without video footage. As I turn to my right, Tom's left knee is dropping at the same exact moment that the tornado is. Get ready for some strange, insane, and jaw-dropping clips. Here are 15 incredible moments caught on camera. <laughs> Fish eats eel. We're starting off with something no one was supposed to see. It's a strange and surreal sequence of events. This is the bowfin fish, which is waiting on the edge of the water with its mouth wide open. Moments later, we realize why this fish has been struggling. We soon spot a live eel emerging from its mouth, who eventually escapes. The bowfin has simply eaten something that was way too big for him, so the eel eventually worms its way out. What was quite a feast for the bowfish was simply no more. And although that footage was caught on camera, not everybody is buying that this really happened. Or what we see is exactly as it seems. One comment on the video said, no one seems to have figured out that it's staged. Like many of those fishing videos from Southeast Asia, a person is manipulating both fish outside the frame and the missing frame. Sad. Another commenter said, this is one of many fake videos over YouTube. Look at the movement of fish both unnatural and probably dead. People shoot such videos to gain views and earn money. So this one might not be all what it seems, so let's take a look at more amazing things caught on camera. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? Subway Rescue at a subway station in New York, a man has fallen down and is laying on the tracks. This is New York, so a train is going to come any minute. An onlooker acts fast and comes to his rescue. He gets down onto the track and helps this guy up. He makes sure he's back off the tracks before getting up himself. Minutes later, a train speeds by. Had this been a couple of seconds later, it could have been toast for both of them. The guy who helped said that he didn't really think much about it. He saw somebody in trouble and went over to help. He's a student at Cornell University and told the Cornell Chronicle, I saw somebody who was obviously in trouble and I was in a position to help him. It didn't really occur to me that it was dangerous at the moment. I just feel like I had the responsibility to just hop in and help him when he needed it. He also gave the man a bottle of water and comforted him. He's perhaps an angel in disguise. The student didn't see it as much of a big deal, but the MTA worker who filmed the video was more than complimentary. He told Washington Square News, I'm shocked still by the decency, concern, and genuine kindness that might lead one to risk such danger to help someone else. The danger is not just the oncoming train, it's the large jump down, the third rail, the stranger putting his arm around you. The truth is, people sometimes end up on the tracks and it's not common that someone would leap down to rescue a complete stranger. Hopefully, this good Samaritan has restored people's faith in humanity. <laughs> world's biggest goldfish. Next up is a man who caught the world's biggest goldfish. Goldfish aren't normally incredibly small, but this one would never fit in if even for the largest goldfish bowl. Andy Hackett is a British guy who decided to do some fishing in France. There was soon a tug on his fishing line, which was a bit more powerful than usual. He knew he could be catching something really big. He told The Guardian, I knew it was a big fish when it took my bait and went off side to side and up and down with it. Then it came to the surface 30 or 40 yards out and I saw that it was orange. Hackett immediately figured out that he had caught the carrot. 20 years ago, the world's largest goldfish was placed inside the Blue Water Lakes in Champaign. Hackett figured that he had caught the carrot or one of its offspring. The fish is a hybrid species of leather carp and koi. It holds the record as the world's biggest goldfish, weighing 64 pounds and 4 ounces. It weighs about half the average adult human. The fishery manager, Jason Kohler, told The Guardian, We put the carrot in about 20 years ago as something different for the customers to fish for. Since then, it's grown and grown, but it doesn't often come out. She's very elusive. Andy posed for photos with the carrot, but then threw her back into the water. The carrot is perhaps still roaming these waters. Goldfish are not usually eaten by humans. The main reason is that they're just not very tasty. They're not even healthy to eat either and sometimes carry parasites so not a very safe option as food. But they do make good pets. 
Surf Zipline Our next footage is one of the most insane sports ever. Adrenaline junkies will do whatever it takes for a thrill. They love surfing and ziplining until one crazy guy decided to combine the two. Imagine surfing along a zipline wire. While they're riding on the board, they're wearing a backpack. In this backpack, you'll be relieved to hear it contains a parachute. So they've also thrown skydiving into the mix. It's essentially three extreme sports thrown into one. And of course, even the best surfers around would struggle to stay perfectly balanced along a zipline. The video was shared by Red Bull Media House and is performed by a group of French guys aptly known as Flying Frenchies. One of them told RedBull.com, it was so crazy to surf like that after two years of dreaming about it. It was insane to be on a board at that speed, at such a height. I learned so much about my own capacity to do things. It gives me a lot of self-confidence for future ideas. I know I can bring them to reality. Mm -hmm. Insane Balancing Skills Over in China is a man with some unbelievably insane balancing skills. He manages to carry 16 styrofoam boxes, all balanced on top of one another. He then manages to take an exact number of them off and place his current load on the back of a truck. He's clearly used to doing this all day and picked up this unbelievable skill. This might have taken 50 takes to shoot, or just one. Maybe this is all part of his everyday life. <laughs> climbing Bridge with Fingers There is a very specific technique in climbing known as crimping. This is when there's only your fingertips available to hold yourself and the entire weight of your body rests upon the small parts of your hands. In this video, this climber decides to crimp across a bridge. After a few straightforward crimps, he starts twisting and turning. He's basically just showing off now. He then climbs back onto the railway halfway. It looks like he's just going to climb back up, but instead he does a backflip into the water. So he can crimp and dive too. And of course, a lot of people in the comments compared him to Spider-Man. If Peter Parker ever needs a day off, he should phone up this guy. The video has the subtitle, Professional Movements Do Not Imitate. So don't try this at home. As you can imagine, this activity requires a lot of patience, practice, technique, and extremely strong grip. This climber has also trained hard to position himself so all the weight does not solely lie on his fingers. <laughs> Hill climbing Hill climbing can be difficult, but a much easier way of getting up on top of a mountain is to get a motorbike and keep driving up and up and up. This video begins with the footage of a steep mountain covered in sand. Then a motorbike begins riding up. The bike was presumably full of gas as it would need full power to keep going up at that speed. At no point does the bike slow down or come into any difficulty. In fact, the motorbike even jumps off at the top. But this is not the first time this has been tried and is even a niche sport of its own. The sport began in America and has also gained some popularity in France and Austria. These are usually performed on hills which contain only sand as riding up rocky mountains could be a lot more dangerous. And things can get quite competitive. All riders will have time to see how long it takes them to get to the top and compete with one another. The game begins with which one of them can make it to the top. Once someone has made it to the top, the game turns into who can make it to the top in the shortest time. <laughs> motorbike Chariot Race And speaking of crazy things to do with your motorbike, this motorbike chariot race is another incredibly niche pastime. Inspired by the chariot races of ancient Rome, the horses have since been replaced by motorbikes, allowing them to go much faster. This supposedly came about in Australia. But these are Americans, Europeans, and New Zealanders who beg to differ. Someone was bound to come up with this sport. The motorcycle was becoming very popular in the 1920s, and in 1925, the movie Ben-Hur, A Tale of the Christ was released. The movie contained a lot of chariot racing, and it was inevitable that some motorcyclists watching wanted to do something similar. And it didn't stop there. Riders would wear Roman costumes to the races. It's amazing how there's little information about accidents happening. And the Australian stunt driver, Jack Field, is helping keep this tradition alive. He has a series of throttles to help control two motorcycles from the front. Do we need to tell you not to try this one at home? Hopefully not. <laughs> the floating table. What you see in front of you is a floating table and has been a magic trick for hundreds of years. It was originally used by psychics as a way of demonstrating their secret powers. Today, it's mostly done by magicians. While doing this, the magician will sometimes ask for a volunteer to feel the table and prove this is a floating table. 
but how can you make a piece of furniture float in the air? As you may know, a magician never reveals their secrets, so we don't know exactly why this is. From what we can see online, the trick might be that the table is incredibly light in weight, allowing the magician to lift it up with the cloth. Under the cloth is possibly a handle to which allows the magician to lift it off the ground. Or maybe, just maybe, it's magic. <laughs> Building Power Lines Have you ever wondered how power lines are placed on top of high mountains? The Sikorsky Sky Crane is a helicopter with the ability to lift up 12 tons. So instead of having a truck dangerously up to the top of a mountain, you just have to fly it straight up in a matter of minutes. They're also incredibly useful for fighting fires and rescue efforts. And this chopper is also a record holder. According to Smithsonian Mag, in 1971, Army pilot James P. Irvin Jr. flew a CH-54 to 27,500 feet in 7 minutes 54 seconds, setting a world to climb record that still stands. In this amazing footage, the power line is lying flat on its back. The helicopter eventually erects the power line into a vertical position and then lifts it off the ground. As you can see, there's only the driver present in this helicopter. The body where passengers normally are is absent. This is probably because it makes the helicopter much lighter and less fuel is needed to lift it off the ground. And when you're lifting a giant power crane like that, the less weight, the better. <laughs> Driving dogs. You probably might find the next video quite difficult to believe. We now live in a world where dogs can drive. Monty is a dog in New Zealand who's fully trained to drive. A charity in New Zealand is training canines how to drive and Monty is their top dog. The driving school for dogs takes roughly seven weeks to complete. In 2012, these dogs made history by driving around in a racetrack and were the first ever qualified doggy drivers. As well as Monty, Porter and Beardy were the other dogs involved. The event went off without a hitch and Lewis Hamilton, if you're watching, you need to watch out. So, how do they drive? The dogs are too small to put their feet on the pedals, so there are extension levers on the seats which are attached to the two pedals. Their trainers walk in front of the car and instructed them to move the pedals which drive the car. And these are incredibly good boys, so they were also wearing their seatbelts. One trainer told the Daily Mail, We train the dogs to do different actions. Touch is the first thing, and then we teach them to touch the different objects with the right paw and left paw. They've all come through at this point, and they're all doing really well. So, in the same way you would teach a dog to sit and give you their paw, they're also trained in doing a number of movements which involve driving a car. The charity focuses on the prevention of cruelty to animals, and with this driving school, they want to prove just how intelligent dogs are and how they should not be subjected to any cruel behavior. So this footage was mainly to raise awareness for a charity. Don't expect dogs to be driving on the roads anytime soon. <laughs> possessed sheep. Next up are what look like possessed sheep. They've been walking around in circles for 12 days. They've been walking around in a continuous clockwise motion and have freaked out any onlookers. This was taken in northern China. The owner of the sheep, Miss Miao, said that the circle started with only a few sheep, but gradually more and more joined. Some sheep stood perfectly still in the center of the circle. The farm has 34 sheep pens in total, but only one pen moved around in this circle. The most frightening aspect is that this behavior was only seen in sheep pen number 13, a number associated with misfortune and witchcraft. The only explanation given is one of them was locked in a pen for a very long time and this might have caused stress. An agricultural expert told the Daily Mail, it looks like the sheep are in the pen for long periods and this might lead to stereotypical behavior with the repeated circling due to frustration about being in the pen in limited space. This is not good. Then the other sheep join in as their flock animals and bond or join their friends. It could also be caused by a bacterial disease. Listeriosis is a disease which disorients animals and sometimes involves them circling. In fact, this is probably the most likely explanation. It's also been known to affect cattle and the same pattern of constant circling also happens. <laughs> Baseball Baby Next up is perhaps one of the coolest dads out there. Keith Harding was attending a Cubs game in Chicago, and sitting on his lap was his own little cub, his son Isaac. The ball was hit off the field, he held out his hand and hit the smoothest catch ever. During this whole time, little Isaac never stopped feeding either. 
Keith told the Guardian, it was just floating in my direction, so I decided to reach my hand out and just catch it. I'm pretty confident of my catching ability. It was a difficult catch, but they say when you're good at something, it looks easy. The mother was just sitting beside them, but because they were in public, Isaac was being fed a bottle. They couldn't find a babysitter, but neither of them wanted to miss the Cubs game. When they reached their seats, he was a little worried about how close they were to the pitch. However, this is partly why it was such a smooth catch. We didn't realize we were going to be quite that close to the field. It's the first row behind the netting. It's no big deal, but first row behind the first baseline, you're in the zone for foul balls. So I was paying close attention for flying balls or bats the whole time. His wife, meanwhile, did not enjoy the limelight. When Keith caught the ball, she told him, of course that would happen to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh, ooh. Tornado proposal. If you're thinking of popping the question, most people would imagine it under a beautiful sunset, maybe even over a candlelight dinner. This meteorologist decided to propose to his girlfriend and fellow meteorologist during a twister. These two meteorologists met in 2016. By 2021, the man knew that he needed to put a ring on it. They drove six hours together in hopes of getting up close with a tornado in Colorado. There was only a slight chance of one occurring again, but they finally found a tornado. During this special occasion, the man decided to get on one knee and pop the question. Tom asked Rhea if she'd make him the happiest man in the world. Tom told the Daily Mail, we're both passionate about the weather, but had never seen a tornado before. And as it turned out, Rhea was thinking of chasing storms at about the same time. This was oddly enough an idea that we both had without letting the other know. I planned out the logistics of it with my close friend and fellow meteorologist Rich Putnam at the same time that Rhea was talking about it with Rich's wife, Steph. They had tipped me off that it was a good idea and we got to planning. But catching a tornado together was no easy task. They don't always work together. Tom also volunteers as a firefighter and they both volunteer at an animal shelter. So for them to both be at a tornado together was the perfect opportunity. And we won't keep you waiting any longer. She said yes. Here's to the happy couple. Hopefully there's nothing but bright and sunny weather for their wedding day. Skydiving puzzle. Our last video was something truly amazing. Skydiving can be terrifying, but imagine if you tried to make it all the more difficult. This guy managed to solve an entire Rubik's cube while floating in the air. While soaring down to the ground in a wingsuit, he decided to have a camera facing down onto his hands where he had to solve the puzzle. The flyer's name is Jeremy Allison who's been skydiving since 2015 and works at a skydiving school. On the YouTube video, Allison wrote in the description, my crappy cube technique usually yields 50 second solves on the ground approximately, but solving the cube while flying, boy, that was a whole other story. So many factors to take into account, leading to a major brain and sight overload. Gripping the cube, keeping a flying-ish position, analyzing cube patterns, keeping an eye on the flying pattern, and of course, altitude awareness at all times. After four failed attempts, the fifth was successful. This feat was achieved in 2018, but Allison was soon outdone in 2019. Fellow skydiver Jeff Provenzano solved two Rubik's Cubes while flying in the air. He had another flyer alongside him and he simply handed the other Rubik's Cube over when he was finished. And this is not the only weird place where a Rubik's Cube has been completed. English teenager Jacob Chambers was also filmed doing a Rubik's Cube while on a roller coaster. But that's all we have time for today. Make sure to like and subscribe for more, and we'll see you next time.